Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? Hello, 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 and happy Sunday to you, my astro-loving friends. It's another week. It's another podcast. This is your episode for the week of October 3rd through the 9th, 2022. I hope that you had an amazing week. Um, how's your weekend been going? Mercury Station Direct, late in the hours of the night on Sunday the 2nd um, at, where's my timing? 2.07 a.m. Pacific. And baby, 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 all weekend long, the tech on your astrologer's end has been a nightmare. Imagine. <laughs> it's like, huh. Yeah, this stuff is written. Uploading my reading subscriptions to YouTube has been uh, a god-awful nightmare. Thankfully, it is over and done with. So those readings are out. So if you're listening to this and you are a reading subscriber, 
make sure you check your inbox because your monthly readings are there, your weekly readings are there, and if you are interested in a reading subscription, you have an option, daily, weekly, or monthly, go ahead to thatdrunkastro.com. You know the link is always in the show notes, as well as a lot of other useful things, including timestamps. So if you're listening to this on YouTube, you can now find timestamps. So if you want to jump from the intro to the moons or jump from the intro to the planetary breakdown, well, baby, you can do that now because your astrologer used Mercury Retrograde as an opportunity to figure out how to enhance your listening experience. And um, yeah. Everything is online. I swear I swear to you. Yeah, just everything. You can find literally everything online. So yes, if you are a YouTube subscriber, and if you're not a YouTube subscriber, I'm really trying to get past the 100 mark so I can change my URL. Because right now it's long and ridiculous, and I really want to just be YouTube.com backslash Drunk Astrology. But I can't customize my URL until I get to that 100 subscriber mark. So even if you're not really a YouTuber... If you're listening to this, if you could just go subscribe on YouTube so that then I can customize that URL. Yeah, that's okay. That's it. (laughs) Just wanted to put that out there. Okay, so as far as the overarching energy of this week, it is the last week before eclipse season begins so now you know longtime listeners you know that i have been prepping you for this fall and winter because uh miss universe lady universe up there she gets real real active and wild okay and we're we're in the build-up we're in the final little build-up now I hope those of you that are on the Cosmic News Train, the Drunk Astrology Newsletter, I hope that if you haven't already, you will listen to the October horoscope that I sent to you yesterday on the 1st of October because this month has a lot of twists and turns, okay? You've got three planets stationing direct. You've got another planet, Mars, stationing retrograde. We have an Aries full moon this week. We have Pluto stationing this week. Mercury has already stationed. Vesta, one of our favorite little asteroids up there, stations direct this week. And we have eclipse season beginning under that Aries full moon at the very end of the week. So we we have a lot of kind of like about face, right? We're, we're, we're turning directions now. And I go into way way more detail on that monthly horoscope um so if you are someone who has not yet subscribed to the newsletter and you want those types of free offerings then click the link in the show notes and get on the cosmic news train because i'm sending out monthly horoscopes new and full moon horoscopes and it's all free to subscribers um and you can actually just get in and just know what the heck is going on on a deeper level past what we talk about each week here on the podcast. So it's literally designed to help you understand more of your current situations. And then when we get into one-on-one readings, you know, that's when we go real in depth. We look at your chart and go, let's, let's talk about your cycles. Let's talk about the season that you specifically are in based on your own natal birth chart. So, yes, this week hosts a lot of events. They are more so at the later half of the week. But when a planet like Pluto stations, we have to give him five days before and five days after. So that makes this week and next week one of a direction shift. So we're going to start feeling this on Monday, October 3rd. That's the first of the days that we're going to feel Pluto station. So depending on where you have 26 degrees of Capricorn or of any of the cardinal signs, Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, Libra, if you have anything at or around 26 degrees in those signs, you are going to feel this about face. Now, we're all going to feel it um, because Pluto 
in his retrograde has slowed or halted progress. But the reason that he is asking you, and he asks you this every single year, our outer planets every single year, four to five months retrograde. But on uh, from a Pluto perspective, it is asking you to evaluate things on a molecular level or to look at your current situation, the things that you've been trying to to put forward since April 29th. That's when he stationed retrograde, April 29th. So if you kind of look between, you know, top of May through Saturday, that's when he'll officially station, but we're going to be filling the buildup all this week. In that time period, where have you felt, and if you look at your chart, then you'll get an idea of like, oh, and you can understand more of like, oh, okay. Like, so for me, for instance, Capricorn is my fifth house, and that is self-expression. That is, uh, it can be even like self-esteem, self-confidence, um, romance, love, creative expression, and I have done deep dives on social media platforms, understanding how to use social media as a way to expand your business, grow your business, but I haven't implemented a lot of the things that I've learned. Every now and then I get I get there, but then, you know, it's been like, oh, and now I'm slowly starting to feel like, oh, now I'm now I'm understanding um how I can schedule this out and map this out so that I'm more present on you know with my social media presence and building my newsletter list and you know all all of those things so pluto's you know slowed me down and also dug up some of the some of the deep rooted i guess yeah i'll say issues some of my own deep rooted issues around you know speaking speaking about every just all aspects of myself sharing my experiences um and yeah some that were dark and you know not not really kosher um and also you know sharing those as well and being you know being outspoken about that cuz the fifth house is the leo ruled house so it's like you know where we want to live loud and proud and big so anyway You'll get a sense in the monthly horoscopes if you haven't already listened to that. You'll get a sense of like, oh, because I go sign by sign and just to where you can feel, where you can expect to feel some of the lift um, from this Pluto stationing to go forward again. So all week long, we're going to be we're going to be feeling that Pluto pivot. Oh, I like that Pluto pivot. Uh, we also have Yom Kippur. So to all my Jewish friends, I hope you have a blessed Yom Kippur and an easy fast. Um, because Ro- it's the last day of Rosh Hashanah. And let's see, Vesta, we are talked about now. Now that Mercury has stationed and moving forward again, he is now going to be in his post-retrograde shadow phase until the 17th. So this is the phase that I like to call the cosmic cleanup. He is going to make his third and final trine to Pluto on Thursday. He is going to make his final opposition to Jupiter next week. Those are the two defining aspects that Mercury's been making in this retrograde story. So remember, you can go back to August 21st through September 9th and see, oh, how how were the things that were taking place, meetings, conversations, um, hearing from people, you know, hearing from the, the people from your past. Now, how was that section of time a preview of then what the retrograde cycle was itself? That was from September 9th now to October 2nd, right? So you can kind of evaluate and go, oh, okay, chapter one, August 21st, September 9th, understood. Now, meat of the the story, right? The, the, the more like climactic part of the story, September 9th through October 2nd. Well, now... Theoretically speaking, you have all the information that you need now, and now we pick back up where we left off, right? So any stalled conversations, anything that's just been a little like confusing or you're not getting – you don't feel like you have a full understanding of the picture. Now Mercury moving forward and reconnecting with Pluto and Jupiter. So Pluto this week and then Jupiter next week. Now it's this is the season of positive change. If you've been feeling like uh, I just 
I know Graham keeps saying this and that it's even if you don't see it or even if you don't – even if there's no evidence of it yet, the evidence starts coming and the energy starts shifting this week with Mercury and Pluto both stationing and moving forward. So that's going to be great. Um, so Saturday hosts the Pluto station and then Sunday afternoon we've got the Aries full moon. And that full moon is potent because it launches us into eclipse season, but it also yanks on that Aries new moon, the astrological new year that we had on March 31st of this year. So you want to go back to end of March, first two weeks of April, and see what seeds were you planting. Now, I have a whole list of notes here for me because I've already gone back and looked at all of my uh, my new moons, I've looked at my Pluto. You know, with Pluto, you want to go back the week before leading up to April 29th and the week following, so that first week of May. And you just see, like, oh, my gosh. And that's what I've really seen. I was doing it last night, and Herman was here with me, and I was like, oh, my gosh. These were all the things that were going on with me. These were all the things that were going on with you. And now we can expect these things to pick back up in a transformative way and 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 move forward. And that's great. And that's really the energy of October is this, oh, okay, let's let's pick this back up again. Even with one of my affiliate relationships, I don't know if anyone listening uses the skincare brand, brand Youth to the People, but I have an affiliate relationship with them. And it's a great one. I absolutely love working with them. I love being a partner or let me not say partner. I love being an affiliate with them. You know, I have a discount code and everything. And their affiliate program, like the codes have been shut down because they're doing some back end work. Hello, Mercury Retrograde. So I reached out and just because I didn't know that and, and I was trying to share my link and the promo code, and it wasn't working. It wasn't working for me. It wasn't working for the people that were trying it. So I reached out, and, you know, they let me know. Oh, hey, like, th- that's all shut down right now because we're doing back-end work, yada, yada. And these guys sent me a ginormous box. <laughs> I mean, it's got, I think I counted nine, seven, seven or nine products in there. And, and you know, it's like, Good Lord. But okay. And when I looked back at my Pluto, uh, when Pluto stationed direct on April 29th, that's when I first joined the affiliate program with them. So, you know, it's just like, wow, you know, here, you know, astrology in motion. Um, But I was talking about that Aries full moon. And... Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity, love and relationships, connection, all those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to, who can I listen to, who can I trust. So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already, but you can also watch each interview on DrunkAstro.com. There's a whole page there for it, and I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to, I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year. Because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you. And there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay, I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert, about how to 
feng shui, your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. Not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our lists, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a beach body super trainer and longevity expert, because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming, every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your your, um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe, enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be, there's no way by using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need. Okay? So, in case you haven't, Got into it. This was just a little reminder. Needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. Yeah. Okay. Got distracted, but, you know, hey. Oh, because I was talking about doing all my tracking. Yes. Tracking the the Pluto um, phase. Tracking the Mercury phase. Um, And then with the Aries full moon, jumping back to what was going on. So I hope that you do the same. Just so you can understand the cycles more when you look back. This is why I really encourage, not necessarily journaling. I mean, you can if that feels good to you. But like bullet pointing your day-to-day as you go go on. Now, you know, I'm Virgo as all get out. So my schedule, my planner is like, the bottom half, all astrology, top half, my day-to-day life. So that you can go back and say, oh, that's who I was talking to. That's what was on my mind. That's what I was feeling. Sometimes I, I put, didn't go to sleep till 4 a.m. This is what was on my mind. You know, but it's not like a, like, dear diary, I am really seeing and feeling that so-and-so won't show up for me the way that it is. You know, it's more like quick little like bullet points enough that trigger my memory to go, oh, yeah, that's right. Or that's when I had a kerfuffle with my lover. That's when I had, you know, whatever. You do whatever makes sense for you, but I highly suggest doing some sort of like day-to-day bullet pointing or just kind of like um, a breeze through of, this is this was my day, um, and just little quick little quick little notes for yourself, um, and eventually, I really want to do like a drunk astrology planner because the way mine's laid out, and if I could make that, I need to find like a wholesale planner company or something to where I can come in and kind of organize my own thing. Oh, if anyone knows something like that, please let me know because I would love to get you all journals so that you or not journals planners like the like how I use it because the way I use it is just like bam and I can already load in the astrology for you and then you just have to oh 
dreams, 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 dreams. And speaking of dreams, why don't we shift into the moons? So we're going to do the moons of the week, and we are in the back part of the zodiac. So we are, you know, really looking at our work. We're looking at our our tribe, our people, our friends, our colleagues, um, and endings and, and creativity. And then at the end of the week, we have that Aries full moon, which initiates a whole new cycle. It wraps up the six-month cycle, but then it you know, really ask us to evaluate, like, hey, like, if you made, if you manifested under that Aries new moon, which is the cosmic new year, the astro new year, um, you know, how are you doing? This is your your midway check-in point. So on Monday, October 3rd, the moon is in Capricorn. It is a busy day. There's one, two, three, four, five, six aspects, um, and the last of which is a void, void of course. So at 8.49 p.m., remember all the times I give you in the podcast are Pacific Daylight. So void at 8.49 p.m. with a conjunction to Pluto. Conjunctions with the moon can go either way, especially when we're talking about Pluto, who is a part of this Mercury, Mercury retrograde story. So, you know, that season of positive change, you know, hopefully you're feeling that with the Capricorn moon as well. On Tuesday, October 4th, the moon enters Aquarius at 3.20 a.m., makes lovely, lovely, lovely aspects. There's a sextile to Jupiter. We love a trine to Venus, a trine to the sun. We love all of that. Tuesday is a great day, um, especially with your friends and with groups and communities. Great day to connect. On Wednesday the 5th, the Aquarius moon makes... Nice aspect. There is a square to Uranus, so kind of like a little something has to change, something has to, you know, some kind of adjustment can be a little frustrating, but remember, squares require action to overcome the energy, to get on the other side of it. It goes void at 3.46 p.m. on Wednesday with a trine to Mars. So the Aquarius moon is just lovely, 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 lovely. Tuesday, Wednesday, chef's kiss days. Then on Thursday, October 6th, the moon enters Pisces at 5.47 a.m., only makes one adjustment to Venus late at night. So quiet day on Thursday, even though we do have the Mercury-Pluto trine that day. So but there is a there's momentum, there's movement on Thursday, which is great. Now, Pisces moons, we can be a little sleepy. We could be a little tired. We might we might want to just kind of relax on Thursday. You know, maybe a lot going on leading up to that, just because the moons are busy but working nicely um, leading up to them. On Friday the seventh, the Pisces moon makes let's see two adjusting aspects, a nice one with Uranus and a conjunction to Neptune. Ooh, okay, there we go. That's a nice little. Um, that's a nice little energy. That's at night, so that's at 9.40 p.m. So you, you might really find that you're in bed early on Friday night, um, dreaming, floating. Be careful with the substances, i.e., you know, if you have any kind of, um, you know, if, you, if you're drinking, make sure you're drinking lots of water in between. Um, if you are smoking something or ingesting some other kind of substance, make sure you are... Um, you know, doing so responsibly. Conjunctions to Neptune with the moon, you know, you might overdo it a little bit. Um, And if you know anyone um, or you yourself are someone that has any kind of substance abuse problem, you know, Friday night, it's it's a great time to check in on your people, make sure that they're good. Um, And if you are someone that needs some extra support, this weekend would be a great time to just say, hey, you know, can I lean on you a little bit because, you know, I'm feeling a little something or I just, you know, would just like some extra support. On Saturday, October 8th, the Pisces moon goes void at 4.10 a.m. opposite to Mercury. Okay, so Mercury is like doing its thing. So you could find that there is a um, (laughs) Pisces moon going void uh, opposite to Mercury. That's funny. So, you know, kind of like what's real, what's not, what's what's true, what's fact, what's not. Um, You know, Mercury in Virgo is a task maker and tangible. He's mutable Earth um, and Pisces is mutable water. 
So the mutable water, the Pisces moon, might be a little like, oh, it could be so many things. It could be this. It could be that. And a little wishy-washy. And then Mercury is like, hey, no, 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 no. What is it? Let's define it. This needs this needs to be something I can see, touch, feel, and manage. Um, so they can, there's a little bit of a kerfuffle energy to that Pisces moon with that closing aspect. Then at 8.57 a.m., the moon on Saturday shifts into Aries. It has a conjunction to Jupiter. We love that energy at 12.37 p.m. Sunday, the moon is in Aries, and it has the full moon at 1.55 p.m., 16 degrees and 33 minutes of Aries. So you want to go look at all your cardinal, especially Aries, if you have anything, you know, 14 to 18 degrees of Aries or Libra, Cancer, Capricorn. This Aries full moon is a talking to you um, in, in, a big, in a big way. Then on Monday the 10th, the Aries moon goes void at 7.02 a.m. with a square to Pluto. So that does make that full moon, well, we already know full moons are climactic, and we'll go into detail with that when I send you the full moon report for all 12 signs. Get on the news list. But with a square to Pluto, there is some sort of um, like struggle, strife, strife, friction, tension um, with a need to change, with a call to change. Remember, that's what Pluto slowed you down for. You know, like what needs to change on a molecular level? Are there limiting belief systems that you're that you're functioning off of that aren't even true to you, that that aren't even true to your story, but because you know you were told something at one point at a long time ago, you are still functioning under that belief system, but that's not even your belief system. Right? So this full moon's gonna climax something, and if you go back to the first two weeks of April, you'll kind of get the idea. I was having a little bit of imposter syndrome under that. Um under that Aries new moon, and I really kicked that ish to the curb um, because I realized it was just some, you know, negative, toxic influence that even impl- implanted that belief system into into my brain, into my molecular DNA, and my astro cosmic DNA said, <laughs> "That ain't yours, boo. That's somebody else's insecurity trying to keep you down." And I said. Oh, is that where that came from? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're not invited. Goodbye. Blocked. Delete. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm sure those of you listening are like, okay, yeah, I get it. I, oh, at least I hope you're like that. You're probably laughing at me, but um, I hope that you're using it to apply to yourself as well, to where you might be feeling some of the same things or realizing, having some of the same aha moments. Okay, those are the moons. Now, we've already talked a little bit about the planets, but let's just, um, let's just get, let's just do a little quick little breeze through and we're going to get you on your way. Vesta stations direct. Now, Vesta is the asteroid of um, home and hearth, right? Your body is your temple, um, also just your home environment. It has been um, retrograde. It's stationing direct at 23 degrees Aquarius. Okay, so what else is in Aquarius? Saturn, right? So building the infrastructure of, like, I'll use my chart as an example. Uh, this is my sixth house, health and wellness. And um, I, it, this is also under the Pluto station, but with Saturn in my sixth house, um, I started a workout program um, back at the end of April. And Saturn cleaning up my sixth house, you know, getting organized, getting back on the wellness track and taking care of myself, nutrition, uh, you know, working out consistently, holding myself accountable, getting my getting my routine back in order. Well, Vesta in that same area of my chart is, you know, retrograde has been kind of a little like, you know, it's been it's required a lot more focus and extra attention. But now with Vesta moving forward and Saturn's going to be moving forward later this month as well, it's now it's starting to be like, oh my gosh, yes, now I can, I can I can start to see how I can organize my. It's taken a while, you know, it's been about four or five months, but I can see now how I can organize my, each and every day so that it's not like where can I fit this in? I just know, oh no, that's when it's happening. So you know, you can. 
again, look at your chart, find Aquarius, 23 degrees, or of any fixed sign, Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio. If you got anything, you know, maybe between 21, 25, uh, Vesta, you're going to feel that lift off as well. Mercury has his third and final trine to Pluto on Thursday. Go back to August 22nd, September 27th. And now here on October 6th, you're having the third and final catch up or clean up of that story from around those dates. Give Mercury a cushion of like one to two days, right? So the dates I just gave you just kind of go and like, oh, okay, all right, I see how that's, you know, or I can expect this to, to pick up again, or I need to follow up on these dates and move, you know, move the, the story, move the situation, the conversation forward. On Friday could be a bit of a boohoo day because the sun is opposite Chiron, our wounded healer. That also happens to be the day that my cousin Aaron gets married. So I just know I'm not able to make it, but I just know that there's not going to be a dry eye in the house because it's it's going to be like a powerful and it's a Pisces moon. Oh, my God. People are going to be so boohoo-y. Um, but just remember that when Chiron is aspected, the sun's shining a bright light on your, you know, on like a trigger, on a wound, on a trauma even. Um, but just know that the highlight from the sun, one, it's meant to warm you up, right? But it's also meant to show you like, hey, work with this story in a new way. You know, turn pain into gold in some way, shape, or form, Um it just can be, you know, that can be a bit of a, like, transformative emotional experience. So let it be, you know. You don't have to resist it. You don't have to don't have to hesitate to go there. How about, how about we put that on it? On Saturday, Pluto stations direct at 2.56 p.m. We've already talked about that. And on Sunday at 1.55 p.m., we've talked about the Aries full moon launching us into eclipse season. Now... I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to keep reminding you, especially after Sunday. So for the next several weeks, when eclipse season begins, I want you, I will encourage you, this is what I'm going to say, to take a spiritual sabbatical. You don't want to manifest during the eclipses. They are too wild, frenetic, and unexpected. And instead, you want to do less to receive more. Okay, this is a time where you really want to put your faith in yourself, trust in yourself, and faith and trust in the universe that what you've been doing up until this point is working for you, not against you, right? You want to create space with time, with energy, with love, with everything that you're calling in for yourself. You want to trust that um, it's, it's moving. And we'll talk about these um, this more. Uh, well, it's, it's in the October horoscope, but I'll mention it later on in later weeks for the eclipses, you know, your timeline of events. And it's important to realize what the story is. You locate the story, and then you see, oh, I have a pin drop in that time. I have a pin drop in that time. Now I'm dropping the third pin in this story. And it's evolving. I'm evolving. It is at, you know, Taurus Scorpio eclipses are no friggin' joke. But after Sunday, the 9th, it's anything goes time. Okay, so you can just kind of expect the external environment to get more energetic, if anything, right? Eclipses are not, I don't say all of this to like cause panic or stress or anxiety. That's not the point. It's just so. Because eclipses can be curveballs energy, right? It can throw you a curve. It can, or curveballs can be happening around you. And it's events that can be extreme and go like, wait, what? You know, it's like during eclipses is when we really like kind of wake up and, you know, the news headline, you're like, wait, what? That happened? Um, you know, so I don't, I don't want you to be caught off guard. I want you to expect the unexpected, but I do not want you to wake up every single day in terror. That is not the point. OK, um, it's just you you just expect the unexpected. And sometimes it's not an event. Sometimes it's literally an aha moment. We're talking Taurus Scorpio here. Taurus can be like a physical, tangible event. Scorpio is more that deep, 
epiphany, that, you know, that spiritual, like, aha, or um, a, a reconnection to your personal power, your sense of, you know, personal authority. So it, it, it ranges, okay? So it's not like everyone during eclipse season is like, oh my God, that it's an event that you go, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. So I just, I'm just preparing you across the board, okay? And that's it. I'll encourage you, again, get on that news list so you get all these um, free horoscopes, fresh horoscopes, full moon, new moon reports. And check out reading subscriptions. They are, they're changing frigging lives, okay? Like, and it's just a great way to just, you know, keep your cosmic tune-up, whether it's a weekly, whether it's a monthly, whether it's a daily. You have options, so click the, the link in the show notes and get the get thee there okay all right i will talk to you guys soon i hope you have a wonderful week here we go bye hey one last thing before we go who are three people you could share this episode with who would benefit from learning astrology in real time from learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos from tracking the patterns and cycles to seeing it in real time in motion can you text them right now can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.